what do you think about this belt system? Like if, if the belt can actually show to your actual level of skills, because I think the belt system could is good uh, idea for the kids and grown ups. But for adults, I don't I'm, I'm not sure because kids is like for kids is something like a kind of motivation because they collecting something to go to the top. But right now in our our time, uh, a lot of people, for example, start martial arts. They have uh, some background in some different combat sports. An example, somebody who trained kickboxing for five years, start karate and he start from the white belt. And people look for him like this white belt, so he know nothing. And they're going to trick you like this until you prove that he's different. And it's for me, I don't know. I'm, I'm not sure if this belt system still is a good idea in martial arts. <laughs> okay, where you're not gonna like this, but I don't, I, I, I don't agree with you. I think the belt system, if it's applied correctly, is yeah, this is the way. <laughs> it's, yeah. it's like in the military. The belt system, it should tell you the technical level and experience of a person. That's all. But nowadays, there are so many black belts who should not be black belts. Like, belts don't mean anything. In, yes, in most actually, and this is what, what I'm thinking about, that the belts stop mean this what should mean. <laughs> exactly. But the problem and is not having a belt system. It's just that it's not used correctly. It's not applied correctly. It's like... More about organization could yeah. do something wrong <laughs> exactly yeah well you know originally there was no belt systems it was just yeah. white and then black but then i think it was uh, jigoro kano the guy from shotokan he's the one who started implementing the or the judo guy. i can't remember which judo, one of them. Judo. judo yeah he started implementing belt colors and he took them from swimming he took the colors from levels in swimming hmm. and since then everyone uses it i think it's useful it has a a use, but it's just yeah, that nowadays it's very messy. And yeah, it, sometimes, actually, I think that these birds don't show your level. Yeah, they don't reflect it's reality. It's showing just how much time you use in the dojo. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, the belts I, don't reflect the real skill yeah. or experience in a lot of cases. Unless and it's a very strict school, like it should be. Yes, and actually, during this my martial arts years in the dojos, gyms, and stuff, uh, I I think from my observation that is three ways to get black belt. I don't have any black belts, but I I just observing the other people's. I have three ways, like one which is correct way, like hard work. Second one is a time what you use for this martial arts and third one this is the worst one is the like butt licking <laughs> like when you see some event you just go there because you want to be in the middle of something that people mm -hmm. see that you are really active in the organization and they just boof you up <laughs> yes yeah. and yeah but this is why i i don't i'm not sure about this belt system because they don't showing actually level <laughs> because it it has been corrupted it's been perverted yes. it's not how it should be if it yes. was done correctly then it would be useful what okay the, the only way that matters is the first way hard work i always yes. think of it like this look if i go to medical school i want to be a doctor right i go to medical school and i pay and i study for five years or six years but i don't pass the exams i am not going to be a doctor it doesn't matter that i paid and i went for five years if I don't pass the exams and do things I have to do, I'm not going to be a, a doctor legally. So why in martial arts, just because you pay and you go, you're a black belt? It's stupid. Yeah, and a lot of exams in for belt exams, they look like they invite some big guy who even haven't seen you, he yeah. never see you. <laughs> and he just sit in the, in the like, dojo, he just eat some chips or some, drink some <laughs> colas because because he have to just be there mm -hmm. and later he just tell you which grade you get and he even don't look you for don't look for you how you train how you uh, put yourself to this exam you just do your best and no one look for you because your sensei already write on the paper that 
you're going to get this belt on this exam and he just have to sign up <laughs> that, that's not how it should be yeah but because there's... sometimes especially me i joined to this you know uh, from other videos or just i told you a few times that i train karate for some time and for my exams i was like a, i start from white belt and i for my first test i prepare myself to get at least green belt but I get just the second belt after white belt. So white belt with yellow strike. Mm -hmm. So like was like like nothing. And it was funny because I was the only one white belt who go because it was like you make kata, you cannot go higher. With new kata, you go to the side and people who know more katas will go further and further and further. Mm -hmm. And why I was the only one belt who's who who stay with brown belts. And this should already show it that I have uh, more skills than than this white and yellow but mm -hmm. yeah I don't train enough you know it was just a few months <laughs> yeah, it's complicated there's many things also yeah. for me the first at least before black right the most important thing is technical refinement how good your technique is because if you do a lekata but it's like hands here and yeah yeah, yeah. and I know and, I know but then what's the point you need to actually do it correctly you know, it's yeah. Uh, and I, know, then I know. I know what you mean. But. For a black belt, it's a martial art. You should know how to fight. Even if it's judo, you should know how to do randori, which is the the fighting, and the grappling. You should know how to do that effectively if you want to be a black belt. Honestly, if if we were strict, ninety percent of the black belts in the world of any style would disappear, because yeah. nowadays, outside of Asia, everything is like. Here, here's a black belt. Pay, pay for the month. Here's a black belt. It's yeah, now actually, I think that this, the clubs and organization, they just become like a factories of black belts. They yeah, have yeah. to deliver few black belts every year. Yes, <laughs> and exactly. that's fast, fast, fast. It's it's good for well, there are styles like Kyokushin, and I always talk about Kyokushin because I have a lot of respect how they how people in Kyokushin train. Um. When, when I was doing the Kyokushin exams, I was dead after. It was three hours of lots of kata and physical, and then you have to do a kumite, which is full contact. If yeah. you get knocked down in the kumite, you don't pass the exam. It's that simple. Yeah. So, so the most important for in Kyokushin is fighting. If you don't do the fighting well, it, it doesn't matter if everything else is good, you don't pass. But almost nobody does that because people want to go trained to be social and make friends or just cardio they're not really yeah, yeah. Martial. now this martial arts become a little bit like a fitness yeah, yeah. and yeah social meetings so it, it's happening with boxing yeah with boxing it happens a lot too i was looking for boxing gyms around my my area almost everything is fitness or recreational boxing there is no boxing it's just one hour of doing things like aerobics and then with a bag some silly punches that's it it's very difficult to find good boxing gyms with real boxing hmm. because people just want to go socialize. About this, what you said that if we could do this correctly, so 90% of the black belt disappeared. Uh, I know the story as I got uh, from Capoeira mm -hmm. because I had trained Capoeira before. Yeah, me too. And. <laughs> And in Capoeira, it's nice because they giving your belt. Actually, in my group, they giving your your not belt but cordao for uh, your actual skills. And I know the story that one guy who was he have had instructor level, and he take a break for two and a half years, and he come back to the to the to, yeah to train with people, mm -hmm. and the instructor on this club. When he saw that he's going to put his belt, instructor belt, he said, what are you doing? You should not do this. And take me your, give me your belt. And he gave him lower belt. And he, <laughs> and he said, I will give you back when you show me that you, you are ready to wear this one. This one. And I think, I think maybe this is a good idea to make like uh, testing the black belts after some years so they can prove it that they are worth it to wear this one <laughs> yeah, yeah maybe this was also way <laughs> yeah it's but like i said again before why do people people are like spoiled you know spoiled children right you yeah. give them whatever they want and they're like more and more 
people are like this nowadays. They're lazy and spoiled. They think that just because you train a martial art for a long time, you're going to be, you have the right to be a black belt. It's not like that. It's not a right. It's something you have to work for. Like the correct way should be if someone who is really bad at technically trains for 10 years, he should still stay at like yellow belt or whatever, because that's what his yeah. technical level is. And that's that. It's like with any skill or craft in the world, you don't, you're not called a master if you're not a master at something. A lot of, it really bothers me when I see videos on YouTube of masters or grandmasters of martial arts who can't do a kick or punch properly. Master yeah. of what? I don't understand. Master means that you have dominated the technique perfectly. It doesn't matter. There's no excuse if you're old or fat or whatever. I've seen very old people with extraordinary, like perfect technique. Actually, technique gets better when you're older. You just get weaker or less stamina, but technique gets better. I'm older now and my technique is better than when I was younger because I keep training my technique. So, Yeah. Yeah, but you don't know how it is if you just start now, like you start training yesterday. You don't know if your body would react the same. <laughs> yeah, but Maybe if, it's just because you keep going. Yeah. Well, the, the point is that the training should be about reaching whatever skill you can reach, not thinking that, yeah. oh, yes, I, I deserve to be a black belt. You know what I mean? It's like it's the journey, not to the, the destination that matters. Yeah, I know, but I know. I, will, I, will, I want to get into Sambo. I want to learn Sambo. And maybe I never reach the black belt. Actually, when I, whenever I start a new style, I've cross-trained many styles. I never think I'm going to, like, I want to go up in belts. I just want to be the best in each level as I can be. When I was training Kyokushin, my, my teacher, actually, I'm a first Q in Kyokushin, one below black belt. I'm a brown belt. My teacher wanted me to do the black belt exam. He all the time telling me, Santi, test, when? He's Korean, so his English is not very good. When, when, test, black belt. I go, wait, wait. I wanted to stay more time training so that my technique and stamina, everything was best. So I keep uh, postponing it, waiting, wait. So I didn't do it. I had to come back to Argentina before I did the exam. Now I regret, I should have done it. But I wanted to be like, really deserve that even though he wanted me to do it i thought i was not the deserving but most people they just want the black belt you know and i don't think it's right if you just rush it's like like i said before i, I go to medical school i don't learn anything but then i open my doctor's office and i do some problem <laughs> later yeah, but... oh yeah you told me about the Okay, sorry, you, you mentioned something, like maybe someone did kickboxing for many years and then they go to karate mm -hmm. or something. It, for me, it's okay that they should be a black, a white belt because yeah, yeah, but, it's a but new discipline. A, it's like yeah, learning yeah, a new I, language. I know, but sometimes, you know, uh, this kind of people who have some background have a better start yeah. because they have it already coordination, some body memories, and they can get used to the new things yes, faster yes. than people from but, who just started. Yeah, but those guys, their training, okay, between belts, their training would be shorter. That's what happened with me in Kyokushin. I mm. actually advanced faster than people who never did anything. So I went a little bit faster than other people when I was training Kyokushin because I could, I learned everything really quickly. I already had a base, a technical base. So yeah, that, that also affects, obviously. Someone who never practiced anything is going to be very cl clumsy. Yeah, because actually I, I, I was lucky enough that when I started this karate, I asked my sensei if I can join to the higher group because I was just bored in the lower group because I have a, like now almost 10 years with background in different martial arts and I have to start from the beginning when I just hit in the air oh, <laughs> and yeah. make basic blocks yeah. and do all year only first kata and mm. nothing else and it was i just get sweaty just because i have a gi on yeah i i didn't get anything from this training and i just wrote to this my sensei if i can go to higher group because i would like to improve with my skills not just going lower and lower because i felt like i just going back because i do every time the same things well and, it, it has to do with also there's something it's always better to train with more advanced people because you learn yeah. much faster. 
when I train with someone who is a beginner, I get hurt. They don't know how to use the, the pads or we spar and I get hurt because they don't control their body. Like we know yeah. a lot of people like this. Yes. And that's, it's really annoying. I rather train with more advanced people and I'm really focused and I will try to learn from them. But if you train with, you're going to be as good as the people you train with. If you train yes. with people who are new, new, you're just going to stay in that level all the time. So it's good to mix everyone. Of course, like, okay, to all the martial arts schools I had, all the color belts and the black belts train together. And then there would be some special class only for black belts or advanced mm -hmm. belts. But usually you all have to train together. Otherwise, it's very difficult for the new ones to advance. Of course, black belts don't want to spar with white belts because they'll get kicked in the knee or something. But it's, yeah, it's this the was best way. Actually, funny for me when I when I was allowed to join this higher team and I came to the training for brown and black belts and, and I was wearing white belt and it's like, you know, hello. <laughs> and people just looking for me like, what are you doing here? You, you <laughs> make mistake? You come to the wrong class or what? <laughs> Well, but yeah, after some time, they, they were surprised that, okay, you are not beginner because... Yeah. Yeah, but I, we I, were talking about this before, how sometimes higher ranking belts treat lower belts like unfriendly or like st stuck up like this. That only happens with assholes. It doesn't like... I would never treat a white belt. If I'm, a, like, I don't know, if I'm in Taekwondo, I'm a black belt. If a white belt comes, I'm not going to treat him like that. I'll try to help him, and but there are people who are just assholes who will do that. Sometimes I feel like they just look for you and say, like, "Why you have to breathe the same air?" <laughs> yes, actually, I've, I've, but this happens outside of martial arts too. Actually, in martial arts, if the school is good, you have an air of respect, so people don't usually do that. But I've had it in, for example, in boxing, there was one guy. Everyone's really friendly except one guy who only goes there to talk to girls. I think. Mm -hmm. And the first time I met him, like everyone greets each other. I was going to say, like, we had to do some like it, partner work with pads and he's my same size. So I was, I went to, to that guy and he's like looking at me like, like this and turn around and just go talk to the girls. I was like, who is this asshole? <laughs> and then notice he's always just talking to the girls. But yeah, I think he's a little, he's been there for a long time or something. So he thinks he doesn't have to, and I was new. This was like when I was in the first week. He thought, oh, this is a new guy. I don't have to talk to him. But that shows you that guy is just an asshole. It happens in everything, you know, not just martial arts. But normally in martial arts, it shouldn't happen. It should be about respect also. <laughs> yeah. There's just normal respect between people, you know, just to be a decent person. You don't have to treat others like that. But Actually, when you're talking about respect, you can... Because now it's also the, our time is about MMA. Mm -hmm. oh, you can yeah. see in MMA fighters, people who have a background in traditional martial arts, they are more respectful to yeah. each other than than the only people from MMA. Yeah, definitely. The, the, time of the training. Yeah, that's one reason I don't like the UFC. Most of the time, it's just some guys covered in tattoos, like spitting and talking yeah. trash and insulting each other. Like, it's a circus. And then when they fight, it's really sloppy. I don't like right. it. I, li I like to see, for one thing, if they're fighting, I like to see good technique. I'm a technician. I like technique. I like to see elegant fighting. Mm -hmm. And number two, this circus acting like idiots, this doesn't do anything for me. It's not fun for me. I don't want to see guys acting like idiots. They just get on. It's annoying. So I like, in the UFC, I like, like you say, only the traditional guys. George St. Pierre and Machida, these guys, they're not talking nothing. They just go there, fight, and then they're quiet. <laughs> that's how it should be. <laughs> Even, yeah, yeah. yeah, but that's the traditional background, of course. They realize, don't talk, just train. The other guys are too busy, like, on social media and acting like idiots, so. <laughs> and also they, yeah, even if they win, they, I don't know, they don't respect each other. It's like, yeah. yeah. But this is, this is really, for me, this is painful in this martial arts, like, like uh, you know, world and MMA, that people mm. don't respect each other. Especially in, in martial arts, this, this is for me really painful that, that people 
don't respect each other. <laughs> yeah. Well, I've, I've seen also in martial arts when some younger lower belt guy tries to act all tough and like disrespect black belts. It's happened to me when, you know, very rarely, but it's happened a couple of times. And then when, then you have to spar. When you spar, you will teach him some humility. <laughs> you know, but I never go to hurt anyone. But if someone is disrespectful to me, when we spar, I show him like, you should be quiet. <laughs> I don't know. But without being angry, you know, just showing him. Then they start, usually it's young people who just want to act tough. But with with experience, they become more calm. But yeah. you're going to have assholes everywhere in life, in martial arts or any sport. So, unfortunately. But it's the teacher of the dojo who has to have a healthy environment and teach respect. That's a problem. I don't know. In MMA, I think there's... It's just people going to kick each other's ass. There is no, I don't know how, how teachers handle their MMA class. I think, of course, some must be very strict, but. Hmm. Yeah, in, in actually, in MMA, is, it's really thin line between like sport and just fighting. Yeah. <laughs> Sometimes they look like they just want to beat them up, like beat yeah. each other up. Like, doesn't matter that he can be. Uh, he can broke his knee and be disabled to do anything in his life later or something. Doesn't matter. It's not sport sport way. Yeah, <laughs> it's that's, just, 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 I'm going to beat his beat his ass. And, yeah, yeah, that's why it it depends on the coach. I know there are some good MMA coaches. Usually, f they come from a martial arts background who keep a very healthy and uh, what is the word like a respectful environment. But of course, you have all these weird places where it's just monkeys punching at each other and uh, I, don't, yeah. I don't like this. <laughs> yeah. you've, you've tried some MMA training, right? It was really short period, but yeah, I yeah. tried, I, but it was like every, like in the week time we have just Muay Thai slash kickboxing mm -hmm. and BJJ every second day. <laughs> so, I, I prefer uh, being specialized. Just focus on one thing until I'm good at it and then move to another thing and not try to just mix everything because then you don't become good at anything. It's like yeah, learning many languages at the same time. You just mix everything and it makes no sense. Yeah, this is my problem now because you know, I have to have a free languages in my daily day. <laughs> this is You're my, living in Denmark, right? Yes, I am Polish and I live in Denmark. And I speak English in my work, and I see my Danish is really, really, really small. I I just learning this now, but you know when you are using Polish and English in, in daily day, and you learning new language, and you yeah you mess up everything. <laughs> my, my father lived in Warsaw for five years. I wasn't born yet, but he spoke Polish, so I I learned some Polish just by hearing him. But it's <laughs> bad. I remember only bad things like kurwa and. Kurva in Spanish means curve, actually, so it's kind of funny. Mm. And Roche Barso, like, go ahead or something like that. I don't know. I remember some words. But Danish I can understand more because I studied Swedish for a while. When I, I was much younger, I had a Swedish girlfriend, and I went to Sweden, and I actually studied Swedish, but now I forgot. But I can understand a little bit. Yeah, but, Danish yeah. and Swedish are very similar, so. Yeah, and Danish, Swedish, and Norwegian. Yeah, Norwegian, yeah. Kind of similar. Yeah, but, but what, for me, what's, it's really hard. <laughs> what, what do you see difference between martial arts in Poland and, and uh, Denmark? Do you see a big difference? I think they have some yes. good Shotokan in Denmark, right? I don't know about like in Denmark, but in Poland, if I have to be honest, <laughs> I, have, I haven't met yet black belt who never fight. In Denmark, I, I, I have met a lot of mm -hmm. black belts who have a black belt but never have hit somebody. Scandinavians are very civilized and peaceful, that's why. But Polish are badasses. Actually, in ITF Taekwondo, the Polish are always the top. The top teams are Argentina and Poland in ITF. I don't know these days, but for in the 80s and 90s, it was always Poland and Argentina. They won everything. Mm. And the Polish, because they're tough sons of bitches, like they're like warriors. 
Yeah, I think this is just because of our history <laughs> that we have to be hard to end up. <laughs> that happens when you drink so much of vodka, you end up feeling nothing. <laughs> the small Russians, you know, they don't yeah. feel anything. <laughs> yeah, Rus well, uh, Russians, Russians feel happiness when they're killing someone, they're happy. <laughs> no, I, I have Russian friends, but I always make fun of that. But, oh yeah, you show me this, what was it, tsunami karate thing. Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, I couldn't believe this is from Poland. I just I couldn't believe it. I I you know I haven't know this before, but my friend showed me this like a joke, like a say, hey, I'm gonna, let's make black belts in Kata uh, tsunami. <laughs> it's going to be easy, like two weeks. I mean, yeah, black belts. <laughs> it was a, yeah, it was the silliest thing I've ever seen. I thought it was a joke when. Yeah, when, and this when was I, something. What? No, no, no. I I was just saying. So the thing that I, I was more surprised is in their co they have a competition where they put the bag and you just have yeah. to like hit the bag and they headbutt it and they, they roll around and they do really silly things. It's like watching a comedy show. It's ridiculous. And it was funny that this uh, punching bag was like a really, really, la really long Very line light. Yeah. in the middle of the <laughs> sports <hall. Yeah. laughs> So this uh, punching bag like like flying around. <laughs> and yeah, <laughs> It's yeah. really, it's like a Monty Python movie or something. It's yeah, really, yeah. really ridiculous. I don't. Yeah, but I just know from this friend that I don't know if it's true, but actually I can believe that that this guy who created the style is he could not go high enough, so he created his own style and he gave for himself the highest, uh, you know, uh, level of yeah. Yeah, black belt. I don't know twenty thousand done. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't, I don't i don't know yeah but actually story, but... yeah actually that happens every time some western most of the times when some western guy makes his own style it's that story yeah. he was yeah. really bad at real martial arts so he said fuck this i'm just gonna make my style yeah, so, I'm going to be the high, the highest, exactly like i am the best I, I am the best at this style that i invented so <laughs> but it's it's usually like that there are guys who in real martial arts, they're terrible. But because they invented their own thing, then okay, they can be the grandmaster, it's fine. And there's a lot of that in the West. In the East, you can't do that so easily. You need to know what you're doing. But in the West, most people don't know or understand anything. So, or they, they see some like funny movements and they're, oh, wow, <laughs> they believe, but it, it happens a lot. But it, for me, it's surprising, like how, how they get these people who believe them and they want to train yeah. them. It's like, you see that something is wrong with this. Yes, yeah, brainwashing. But I think first people are a little bit innocent, naive, they don't understand. But after you train for a while, you, need, you have to know it's bullshit. But I think they already put so much time into it, they don't want to stop. They're like, they convince themselves, this is real, I'm a badass, I think in many cases. Yeah. Or, the, or the guys who are like on top and they make money, they just keep doing it because it's business. But yeah, yeah. it's strange. There's, I mean, you know, people join the Scientology and all these crazy things. So the, the yeah. world is strange. There are strange people in the world. And in martial arts is no exception. You know, I, I can understand like when you, when kids training stuff like this, because parents, they just want to yeah. send kids to, for babysitting yeah. and have some free time and they don't care what they do. They just, them, like let's go train this karate or this something and That's, they don't care but and kids don't don't know if this is real or not they just go because they think it's real but when grown-ups start something like this and they see or they saw it the different martial arts <laughs> how they look and later they go for this gym and see hmm this is perfect <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's true it's yeah, it's, uh, it's that weird <laughs> yeah i i've noticed well the babysitting thing is a big problem now yeah but uh the one place where I was really impressed was in Japan. I always tell the story, but I visited. I used to go to, from Korea to Japan and just to take a ferry. It was just three hours away. And I, I've been to Kyoto, Osaka, Fukuoka. In, I think it was Osaka. I went to a Budokan. It's like a gigantic like yeah. martial arts place. And uh, I saw like adults with little kids, maybe six-year-olds, but the little kids were super concentrated like warriors like very quiet and like really focused yeah. it was amazing and the the training was the same for adults and children no playing no running around no talking 
they were very serious about what they're doing. Then I, I see kids training around here in the West and they're just like running around, picking their nose, like, I don't know. Hit each other just Yeah, ca calling their mother them. in the middle yeah. of the training is ridiculous. We, we don't have the, the, we don't take martial arts seriously here. It's just like a sports activity, but it's because of uh, business reasons. Actually, in, in South America, most teachers of martial arts do it as a hobby. They don't live from martial arts because mm -hmm. it doesn't give you enough money. So they just do it on the side because they like it. So they're more serious about it. But people who, own, who have to live from this, of course, they need to adjust and make it more friendly so they can get more money. That's the problem. It sh it should, it's better when it's something that you don't do for a living. I mean, I wouldn't like to teach martial arts for a living. I would like, it's fun to teach classes, but I would just like to do it every now and then, but not make a living out of it because it's really stressful and I don't want to like lower my standards because of money, which happens to everyone. But it happens a lot, many, like, like we were saying, many schools are not even real. It's just some idiot who make up his own story and his own yeah. magic system. <laughs> That's the worst. That's really bothers me. There's very few like real martial arts nowadays. Yeah. This should change uh, this, the name for something else. That yes, um, this is fighting. <laughs> this reminds me we were talking about uh, something related to it, the Jeet Kwondo thing. Whenever I see some Jeet Kwondo school, it's some guy who's just trying to copy Bruce Lee, try to move like Bruce Lee, and that's not Jeet Kune Do. Jeet Kune Do is supposed to be like a open-minded and free, a free interpretation, like a mix. It's MMA basically, but everyone yeah, thinks Jeet show, Kune Do. show yourself, yeah, like, like how you would like to what, move. What works um, for you, yeah. But everyone tries to just be like a clone of Bruce Lee. Also, there's another thing. We saw Bruce Lee in movies, like doing some movie choreography and stuff. That doesn't mean that's how the guy actually fought. Is yeah, it? Of course, if I'm going, to, if I'm going to make a movie, I'm going to like do flying kicks and be really cool and shit. You know, that doesn't mean that's how I would actually fight on the street. But people use that as a reference. Like I don't know what real Jeet Kune Do is supposed to be like, but I think only one percent of all the people in the world who say they do Jeet Kune Do is real Jeet Kune Do. I think they're just trying to copy him. I don't know what you think. Like you, you practice doing tune and stuff like that, which yeah. I, don't, I don't have experience. How I, how I said before to you, like when I when I thinking about Jeet Kune Do, I see the Wing Chun guy who stand in the fencing position and have a just like when you know all basic of Wing Chun. And throw it out this all like stand, standing positions like this base standing position like this Ijin Jamara and you know this this uh, hourglass position. We throw it out this and you have uh, some more free position, but this is mostly Wing Chun. How I see mm. Jit Kune Do in on YouTube or something. Because yeah, this is That's just fast movement, mm -hmm. fast drills. And actually, most most these instructors they showing the drills for people who. Just do the punch and waiting until you make your 20 moves and put them on the ground. Like, mm -hmm. yeah, just look cool on the video, but. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's what I also think. It's just handwork from Wing Chun. But Bruce yeah. Lee said that people should, like martial artists should learn boxing. I, he said that specifically. So yeah. if you were to follow Bruce Lee's words, then it shouldn't be Wing Chun, it should be boxing that you're using. Yet yeah. none of the Jeet Kune Do guys I've seen know how to box. They just, here's another thing. I, okay, I have a question for you. Does Wing Chun, what, what kind of stance do you have? The strong hand in the front or in the back? No, my, I was learning that my strong hand was on the front. Mm -hmm. that, that's Bruce Lee's concept. Also, like, put your strong hand in the front because it's closer to the target. But, I, but if you have your right hand in the front, there's many problems with having your right hand on the front. One big problem is that your liver is right there, so you can yeah. get hit in the liver really easily. And I've been hit in the liver a few times. That's why, like, this elbow is always there. I don't want to get hit in the liver, but when I fight left, left-handed guys, I kick them in the liver all the time because it's right there. You know, it's not because I'm amazing. It's just easy because your liver is right in front. Yeah. So I think having uh, that stance with the right hand in front is not a good idea. It's good to know how to use it, but you switch. 
every now and then. Like I do it, I switch, but I don't stay like that because it's very dangerous. And that's only one problem with it. Yes, in Wing Chun, I, I, my, my, my trainer, he never said that I should say Sifu Wing, but he, my trainer, he, uh, he teach me that I have to switch positions all the time. Yeah. Because if I switch in from right to left, I may confuse my opponent yes. because if I, most people standing like left to like on the front and normal fighting position. Yeah. So you ex you know what you can expect from this this position. <laughs> yeah. But when you're switching all the time from right to left and you have to you say be relaxed, don't jump like like a you know yeah. a jumping ball, just just walk and be natural for you and yeah. I, I agree. I agree. Exactly. About the mm -hmm. about the hands on the front, uh, my, now I start in boxing. My coach said really nice things for me like about the hands and movements like this also is covering with Wing Chun that I have to go always outside mm -hmm. of the front uh, front arm because he told me like when you stand like this you have to go from this side because yes. uh, arm from in the front is a bed this is hospital so yeah. where do you want to go <laughs> to the bed or to hospital yeah <laughs> and this is really really yeah this like for some people this can open eyes this this things like Bed, hospital, where you want to yeah. be. So go to bed if you have to go somewhere. <laughs> you always want to go on the outside. That's in everything. All, all fighting, you want to go to the outside. He can't hit you with his back. Yeah. He can hit you from the front, yeah, but not from the back. So, yeah, of course. Um, what was I? I was about to say something. Oh, yeah, about the switching the stances. When I started kickboxing, there was another guy who is also a black belt in karate, another style, Shin Shin Kan, anyway. Uh, he and I were the two that switched stance all the time. So the other guys who always fight with the same stance, they told us it's really annoying to spar with you because you keep changing your stance and I don't know how to react. So it does mm -hmm. help a lot. Like yeah. for me, I don't care if he's right-handed. I actually prefer fighting left-handed guys because of the liver thing, but... But boxers yeah, don't like fighting left-handed guys. I don't know why. Oh yeah, because they can't go on the outside so easily. My my problem was is like I am the right-handed, but I like to fight with my uh, you know right hand mm -hmm. in the front. But it's not because of Winchun. Just because once when I go to tournament, I decided because I always when I go to tournament I don't go for winning something. I just go for test myself or make this treat this like a training. That's how and it should I make be. some yeah I make some mission for me always like okay so now in this tournament I'm going to fight with my right hand all the time in the front and after this tournament I just stick to this <laughs> position and I always it's more comfortable right now for me standing like this than be on my better side yeah, but but it, it, because of Wing Chun I can switch mm -hmm. I can, yeah. for, for me it, it depends on what I want to do Sometimes I want to have my strong uh, leg or hand in the front more for the kicks than the hands. Some kicks are more comfortable if they're in the front, like a side kick or something. But if I want, if I want to spin kick with my right, I'll put the right in the back. Did you yeah, hear that? Yes, yeah, something. Where, yeah, my neighbors are making noise. Hold on. <laughs> there we go. Anyway, if I want to spin kick with the right, I, I will put it in the back. It depends what I'm going to do. I change my stance. It's something you think in the moment, you know, it's not like I, I keep always the same. It's good to be able to switch as often as possible. Yeah, you have to be like, <laughs> you have to be like a water. <laughs> yes. I mean, uh, Bruce Lee was a philosopher and an actor. Then he was a martial artist. I know people yeah. are going to get really angry at me, but he was actually an actor before he was a, like a fighter or something. Yeah. He was a philosopher. He said some good things, but... Like I said, Jeet Kundo is not supposed to copy the guy how he moved. It's it's like, like people like to compare. Like if Bruce Lee going to fight some modern fighter who going to win, I think somebody <laughs> who have a good ideas yeah. about training and somebody who actually train every day to fight. Yeah, who going to win? This guy who have a good ideas or this guy who yeah, I agree. actually fighting. <laughs> yes, I agree. Also, there's also the fact that martial arts have evolved a lot since the 70s, the 60s yeah. and the 70s. The technical development in all martial arts is like huge. If you can see black belts from that time kicking is really embarrassing. 
And now you see guys like Van Damme who have perfect, beautiful technique. It's the training methods and the, the understanding of technique, everything changed. So I don't, only a few of the guys from that time, I think they're, they could still be champions today. But most of the guys from that time, it's, it's very different what it was. It's like comparing medicine to what it was 50 years ago to what yeah, it is yeah. now. It's, everything has evolved, especially fight science. Like, fighting is a science and an art, and it has changed a lot. What, what are you training these days? These days? Yes, like l lately, what are you training? Right now, yeah. right now I train boxing, but on my past, I start with capoeira. Mm -hmm. Later I move to kickboxing but this was a really short short period just to because everyone laughing about capoeira that this is not much art so i go to kickboxing to try myself if this is true or not and actually because of capoeira that i have all the time somebody's leg close to my head <laughs> because it's like really active the, mm -hmm. the game and actually i was really good with dodging <laughs> the punches because i have this kind of movement but I don't have a, a yeah, good yeah. boxing because, yeah. And, but after after this, I know maybe one month with boxing and I go to train Wing Chun. After Wing Chun, I, I moved to Denmark. And in Denmark, I started training Judo and Taekwondo and Goju Karate. So, but right now, I, I start boxing and I feel like <clears throat> this all 10 years of martial arts before, it was just warm up to know how to fight when I, now I get in how to fight in boxing mm -hmm. because when I go for boxing I thought like yeah it should not be that difficult because I have to just forget about my legs and just do my things <laughs> oh it's and, actually the most difficult is boxing actually yeah and and I, I I every training I come back home with red face because I get a lot of punches yeah. on my and I, I could not feel the distance. Like I see, okay, this guy is over there, so he cannot reach me with his head, he, uh, hand. He could reach me with his leg, but not with hand. But they, they go in like, they, sometimes they move further their shoulders so they can reach you even you think that he cannot because in traditional ways, it's just and cut and it's enough. <laughs> yeah, when, when all you can use is your hands, it gets really, really difficult. Yeah. It's not the same when you have kicks and other things, you have so many more tools that. Yeah, and I also see them like, okay, I could kick you here, 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 yeah. but when I, <laughs> I have to use only hands, it's like, and they move all the time, like, they you try to hit him, but he all the time doesn't. <laughs> yeah, it's actually, different art. <laughs> the, the defensive work is the most difficult. Anyone can learn how to throw a punch, but to actually defend yourself against the punches or kicks or whatever, that's the most difficult part. Yeah, me too. When I started kickboxing, I got my hand punched every day. But yeah. now, now I learned after getting punched many times. And well, you can see that the, the head movement and all that is actually very difficult. I end up with my waist hurting many times from training all the bobbing and weaving, you know. But yeah, it's, uh, it's really fun. But you can, you come, the martial arts you did until now and this, you mix it. It's not like it was not a waste of time, you will see. No, 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 no. Yeah. I... I, I really, I'm really happy about my background in this mm -hmm. because actually I'm, I think I'm the most happy about the capoeira area, uh, capoeira time because before I was really, uh, I wasn't that social person. I don't, I don't, I don't like people. <laughs> yeah, you're yeah, Polish, and, that's why. <laughs> <laughs> and when I go to capoeira, I just, I get, I make friends and I become more open to people for uh, new, like, I know it was totally different. Yeah, capoeira is a joyful, it's like a happy kind of training. So, yeah, yeah. people have fun. It's, it's, there's a lot of fun. I want to go back to capoeira someday. But yeah, now so that... Every time when I go to Poland for some, some holidays, I always go visit my friends and yeah, I get some capoeira training with them. Mm -hmm. uh, it's, it's really nice. <laughs> okay. And really, actually, it's really tough training. People just yeah. think that this is some dance, but when you try to move like this for one and a half hour all mm -hmm. the time, not just standing and do something, you just have to move all the time. Yeah, <laughs> okay. and also my when I was practicing capoeira, I was a teenager, but my upper body, my shoulders and arms and everything was really, really strong, because you have to like lean on your hands, your weight on your hands a lot. 
So it's not just your legs. People don't understand. It makes you really strong. Yeah. It, it's not easy. And those kicks are really fast. If you do it for real, you can, re you can knock. I actually knocked the guy out. It was an accident. I knocked mm -hmm. the guy out with a, a u compaso, you know, putting your hands yeah, on the yeah. floor and turn. I kicked him in the face. And I, I didn't mean to. He was supposed to duck. Yeah. And it was slow. So if it was fast, it would have been like a, an injury or something. So yeah, the, those kicks are very dangerous. Yeah, my, my trainer, he said always like, when somebody kick you, it's your fault. When you kick somebody, it's your fault. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, so you have to always look out to each other and say, this yeah. is not play, this is game. You have to, you know, it's like I give you a question, you answering my question. So when I kick in, you dodging or you kick in and I kick in after you. So we, this is like conversation between you and your yeah, exactly. yeah, yeah. opponent. Yeah, but yeah. but about capoeira also it's like this. They have in jinga you have really low position, so also your legs getting some exercises. Yeah, <laughs> if you do it properly, uh, actually the meaning of the word capoeira, as it was taught to me, is close to the ground. Mm. So yeah, you're supposed to be very very low. And in, in traditional karate, also a lot of the stances are really low. Like, it really makes your legs burn. Yeah, yeah. So people, there's many people who say kata doesn't is shit. It's useless. Blah blah blah. Forms are useless. Actually, they're completely wrong. They strengthen you. They teach you balance and control of your body. I think yeah, there is actually about control of body. I think this is the most the, the biggest point of making kata. Yeah, it it has a, a really for me it's really valuable training. But many of these modern guys. There's many guys on YouTube who say kata is useless, kata is shit, blah, blah, blah. They're idiots. They're like these McDojo guys or the guys who make their own style. They don't have enough experience to understand what that is for. It's actually, there's a reason why for hundreds of years they've been using kata. For me, it's made all the difference. I, can, I have much better balance than someone who has never trained kata. Or like I've, I've fought kickboxers who are, or sparred with kickboxers who are really good at kickboxing, but they don't have good balance sometimes mm -hmm. because they don't have this like training. You can see the yeah. difference. It's only power what they train. Sometimes yeah. you don't need power. You need precision. It's like trying to kill a fly with a cannon. You don't need a cannon to kill a fly. Sometimes a very small thing can be very effective. Uh, I want to make a video yeah. about that sometimes. I want to make many videos explaining things, but... I don't get the opportunity to like, I don't have a space to film and everything. Sometimes in my gym, sometimes I get a little bit of, but that place has too many people. Like when I finish my training, there's already another class. Some girls do yoga or something, so I can't film anything. But yeah. how, how do you film your videos? Like they're really nice. Actually. I always tell you, I like how you, is it in your dojo or? I have a, like, because I have a good connections. I can say <laughs> Because I, when I moved to Denmark, I was like a student exchange on, on student exchange program. Yes. And I was in one school which was dedicated for Asian culture, like uh, martial arts and Japanese language. And uh, they have a really nice environment. Like they have a, this nice dojo and I dojan this, mm -hmm. this blue and red mats, what you could, can see on my channel this mm -hmm. in, in this place. And sometimes I recording in this karate dojo where I train it. Sometimes in my fitness, <laughs> I try and always like find some space where I when yeah. I can be alone. But not always is possible. Yeah, but it's good and that you have you have the opportunity. Who films? Who films you? Your your girlfriend? She's the one who filmed you. Uh, normally, it's just my tripod. <laughs> ah, yeah, same as me. I just put a tripod. <laughs> yeah, because. Actually, I'm a little bit shy when she <laughs> holding camera. It, it I, happens I, to me too. I want to be alone or just with someone helping me. But if there's other people looking at me, it's a little bit uncomfortable. That's why yeah. I don't record videos talking to the camera too much because I don't want anyone like to like curious about what I'm doing. Yeah, I, I try to do some vlogs sometime, and I feel really not comfortable yeah. like talking to to the hands. <laughs> <laughs> And people look around me like, what are you doing? <laughs> yeah, I, I know what you mean. 
actually I've I filmed a few times like sparring in the park and we were going pretty hard and everyone was looking at us like we're crazy or something. <laughs> as long as they don't call the police or something, hey, we're just doing exercise. It's okay. When I was in Japan, I, I, I'm really sad about it that I didn't make a vlog, but I, I was too shy to make a vlog in Japan. Yeah, <laughs> I know people don't understand me, but... <laughs> But most people don't understand, would not understand me, but it's just weird to walk in with the camera and talk yeah, to the camera. Yeah, I, I wish I would have made more videos when I was in Asia, but I'm planning on traveling again, so I, I will do some, some more videos. Actually, I have many videos from the past that I did not upload, so maybe I have to look in my computer. But I know Japan is... Where did you go to in Japan? Where were I was you? Just, I was just in, around Tokyo. Uh, I, I didn't go to Tokyo, actually. I went and many, actually, many times to Fukuoka, though. Uh, I would like to go to this. Actually, it's a plan, my plan with my girlfriend to go for this Budokan, what you called before. Oh, yeah. And she would like, she would like to go to Okinawa to train in Goju. Is she already a black belt? I forgot. Uh, she is not yet. Soon. <laughs> She's like a one level before. Goju Ryu is nice. I like it. Yeah. Anyway, that's it. Your girlfriend probably wants you to go back to, to she has to use your computer, right, or something. Uh, <laughs> how, how are you with time, I mean? No, no, it's, my time is, yeah, uh -huh. I, I, have, I have a time, no, but. Okay, okay, yeah. like, the thing, you, I, I don't know how long we've been talking, that, that is okay. Me too, I don't, I don't see on this program. It must be like 30 <laughs> minutes or something or more. No, it's 5.30 here, anyway. Oh yeah, one other thing. I I have a paper with some things I was going to ask you. <laughs> uh, we we kind of mentioned it a little bit, but uh, t just as a funny thing, like tell me about when you sparred with guys who are not very good level. Do you always get hurt, or it's happened to me a few times? Mm -hmm. Actually, not always, but you have to be double careful. Yes. <laughs> for everything. <laughs> I, I, I for have your video. techniques and his techniques. Yes. <laughs> I, I have videos, I didn't upload this, but when I, I was training Taekwondo again, like last year, or was it? Yeah, that was last year, I think. A couple of months I trained Taekwondo again. And there was a green belt there who was not very good. He came from another school and he wanted to spar and I wanted to spar. So my teacher put me with him to spar, right? But he had no control. It was like, he hit me here, right here. He would turn around like this and yeah. Try to do like a spinning back fist or something. And I'm not expecting guys to do weird things. It was really strange. Like he's throwing just stuff from movies. So he actually yeah. hit me in the right there on the neck. And I was like coughing and I, I was really annoyed. I, I'm, I never get angry, but I, w I was actually a little bit angry. And then he kicked me in the balls like three or four times. Not on purpose. The guy just no control, you know. So yeah. it's, a, it's a big problem. It was, I have a similar time, similar story that, maybe not similar, but I go, I go to some training where it was just about Kumite. We have to train how to fight. <laughs> and was some guy who had a brown belt, I think, or black, I don't know, I don't remember. But I haven't seen him before in normal training. And uh, I think maybe he just came to, to train with us, I don't know. And... In, before the fight, I told you, I told him that I just operate my knee. Please don't sweep me, <laughs> don't kick me <laughs> in this leg. <laughs> and you never guess what he did in the first <laughs> move. <laughs> first, he kicked my leg <laughs> because because he wanna kick my uh, my ribs, but mm -hmm. he could not lift leg that high. Wow! So he kicked my knee. He was a brown belt. Yes. <laughs> That's not a, he's from a bad school, I think. Yeah, and after this, we uh, become like some kind of cringe, I don't know. And he tried to sweep me, but not throw me. Like, kind of hip pro, mm. but it wasn't hip pro. It was something like, I don't know, he tried to throw me, like, a, kind of hip pro, but he used his... Uh, Half. Yeah, he ties to... Yeah, so yeah. my knee was on the spot, <laughs> yeah. and he just threw me like, yeah, I, I I just fall because I feel pain in my knee because I just get operate my knee. So for, if I was really sensitive in this area, and I just fall because I want to just 
yeah, just break this his technique. <laughs> yeah, it's, because it's, if he just pulled further, probably I could break again with the same knee. So, <laughs> man, the the really uncomfortable thing in that situation is like. You have to tell your teacher, hey, I don't want to practice with this guy. And you come off like it's not good. You know, it's an uncomfortable situation. Yeah. Like, I didn't know when I was sparring with that guy, I didn't know what to say to my teacher. Like, I was thinking, fuck, I don't want to do with this guy anymore. You know, he's going to be kicking me in the balls, hitting me in the neck. But if I say like that, I'm going to sound like I'm an asshole or something. Yeah. Like, but, disrespect uh, him or something. but when I was a green belt, I was not like that. I was more careful. I don't know. And... Actually, when I, when I spar with the, like very advanced guys and we go very hard, we never get hurt because there's a lot of control in the power, you know. Sometimes yeah. maybe a little bruise, but, but when you spar with someone who's low level, even without power, you get hurt. It's a knee against your elbow or uh, kicking in the balls. Like, <laughs> that's a very common problem. And so I have also the problem with, with judo sometimes. When I, I am not the high level judo player, mm -hmm. but but sometimes when you start with somebody who just started sometimes i'm afraid to <laughs> my legs and everything because yeah. This, yeah judo is like art of sweeping <laughs> and yeah judo is supposed to be soft actually well judo means the soft way yeah. but maybe beginners try to use only like body force power and like they hurt you many people get injuries from judo actually i love judo but knee knee injury is very common in judo actually yeah, actually, I break it yeah. in judo tournaments. So. Do you know who Bill Wallace is? There's a very famous kickboxer from the 70s called Bill Wallace. Mm. Okay, this guy was a black belt in judo and also Goju Ryu. And he kicked amazingly. He kicked like a taekwondo guy, but he was from karate. But he kicked really amazing. But he only kicked with one leg. And he was a world champion in kickboxing. He's like 70 years old now and he's doing seminars everywhere. And he still kicks amazing. But he could only kick with one leg because he broke the other knee in judo, actually. Someone fell on his knee or something and broke it. So, yeah, it's a big problem. You have to be very careful. I really like judo, but I worry about that, too, you know. It's like... Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's everything depends on how, how you train. Yeah. And actually, the most injuries come in on tournaments. Oh, yeah. <laughs> because yeah. In, tra in training, you... This randor is like you have a playful, like... You, you make this it a bit hard, mm -hmm. but you don't have to prove somebody that you are better. Yeah. You're training because in judo you have this, this that you have a, a uke and tori. So mm -hmm. teacher and student, like mm -hmm. I teach you something and you get something yeah. and the positive side. Like I throw you, so next time you can get lesson from this throw that how you can avoid this this throw in the future because you get this lesson, so you have to found the way next time how to avoid this. Yeah. So I like this, uh, this kind of like a Libra. So yeah, it's something oh. between. <laughs> so everyone getting something from all moves. Yeah, but you and should never, when you go train, you should never get hurt. You don't go there to get hurt. You go there to improve your skills. Yeah, this was even, even in I hard, make judo. <laughs> yeah, even in a hard styles like Yokushin and other like very hard styles, you will get some bruises, little little something, but nobody gets injured normally because you're it's a controlled environment. I got more injuries playing football, soccer for Americans. I got many injuries, but in martial arts, just in 27 years of martial arts, maybe three three injuries, or not not very often. But in football, I broke a couple of toes. I broke a finger. I broke a toe. I dislocated my ankle. Like many problems. But the martial arts, just two or three things, because it's a controlled environment. Like we control what we're doing. But yeah, yeah in competition, like... <laughs> you can have some crazy guy who just tries. To... Okay, actually, I in a taekwondo competition, I got, uh, I think it's this eyebrow. I have four stitches. I think it was four or five stitches. On, but you cannot see because under my eyebrow. But my whole eye op up here it opened and it was like blood, and my eye was huge. It was, I look like a monster from one kick. So if you have bad luck and the other guy is crazy or something, but normally in your class, you're not going to get hurt. Competition is a different story. Actually, what's funny about what you said to your uh, eye, I have a similar story that I was a point fighting. I don't like point fighting. It's supposed to be soft, but you know, 
when you try to be speed, uh, fast and somebody try to be fast at the same time and you just yeah, go crash. to each other, <laughs> it's not that sort of how you expecting. <laughs> and uh, this guy tried to make normal roundhouse kick, but his toes was really not like flat, just go mm -hmm. like this, and they just go to my eye. <laughs> ah. And of, of course, also his this. Uh, leg protection was here like too short one because he borrowed mm -hmm. from somebody's and his toes was further than his protection and when he killed my eye i was i looked like kind of cartoon character because my eye become like uh like Swollen. i get like a kind of ball yeah that happened <laughs> i could not me. see anything for this eye it's like Shit. i just felt like i'm like from anime character you know <laughs> you're you're lucky your eye didn't get damaged i was also very lucky because just to, one little bit lower, I would lose my eye. Yeah. I'm lucky, like I'm okay, but I had to go to two doctors that night. It was really far. The competition was really far, like three in the morning. We finished because there were too many people, so all the fights were really late. Actually, the guy kicked me. I, I felt like a shock, but no pain, just like a shock. And then a doctor came running into the tatami and said, oh, you have to stop. And I saw the blood falling down and I didn't know what's happening. And yeah. my friend, everyone is looking at me like, holy shit. And someone take a photograph of me, and I said, "Hey, show me." And they said, "No, don't look at it." <laughs> and then, it's when you don't know. <laughs> yeah, and, and my friend went to get some ice, but it was so late that there was no more ice in the shop. There, or like a kiosk, there was no more ice. They only had ice creams. So he bought a bag with ice creams with little sticks, and I have the ice creams in my my eye like this. And all the children were looking at, "Wow, ice creams!" It was crazy. And then I went to a doctor, like, I got home really late. I went to a doctor with my dad at like three in the morning. One, the one doctor to see if my eye was okay. And then I have to go to another doctor to get the stitches. It was a nightmare. But, and then I was like five months, I, I have a ring, a black ring in my eye. It took a long time to go back to normal. And I, I, I had a German girlfriend at the time. So I went to Germany. And I, I look like a panda. So everyone is looking at me like I'm a street fighter or something. Like I got in a fight, but it's, it was, <laughs> uh, I'm very careful yeah. with my face getting hit now. About, about this, this with like panda. I, <laughs> uh, after this, when I get this, this ball on my head and also this, also I get like a panda, eye, how we said, and I was uh, like, this tournament was in the weekend. On Monday, I have to go to school because I was a practice. I, I, st I studying uh, physical education, so I was a sports teacher, and I have to go to school, and I have like this. this I, all, all kids have to ask him, like, "What did you do? Why you have this? Did you fight with somebody or something?" So you know how how is it kids? They are really yeah. curious. <laughs> I actually, when I was when I was a teenager, before even much before this, uh, with my family, we used to go to Brazil on vacation. Brazil is right next to Argentina; we're neighbors, so it's very common to go there. And I got a black eye in a really stupid way. I, we rented a house that had like these double beds, you know, on top and on bottom, bunk yes. beds. And I invited a couple of my friends because we rented a big house. So I, I couldn't invite friends. And in the night, we turned off the light and I was sleeping on the bottom one. Yeah. And then when I didn't see what I was doing, I was, it was dark. So when I, I go down to go on the bottom, I hit on the edge, I hit my eye on the edge of the bed. And I didn't realize it just hurt. But when I wake up, it was all black. And everyone in the beach was looking at me thinking I've, I got in a fight or something. I said, No, I hit myself with the bed and no one believed me. <laughs> it was really stupid. I should just say, Yeah, I'm a street fighter, but I didn't want to lie. By the way, I noticed you have behind you the warrior monkey fist. What? What is that? You've what, what about Before you finish, I just wanted to see, did you print the logo of your channel in the back? What yes. is it? Yes, it's my old, old uh, logo and my new logo. Yeah, it's like my motivation uh, wall. <laughs> oh, did, did you design that? Yeah, yeah, actually these two logos. Uh, actually, no, this, this, this old one, I designed it. And this new one with just fist, I ask my friend to make it for me cool actually so, I, I studied uh, multimedia design it's like graphic design with other stuff so i'm a graphic designer but okay. that, that's actually quite good i like it what what did you study physical, uh, physical education it's like for being sports yeah so you're a you're a uh, physical teacher or 
how do you call it in English? Right. Professor de Educación Física, physical education teacher. You're right. a co you're a, like a sports coach. Yeah, like like yeah, I could I could teach sports in schools. That's in good. So yeah, education. But okay. yeah. <laughs> we, we say thank you to your girlfriend for giving us time to do this conversation. It's nice of her. Yeah, we should do this one more time, maybe someday. Yeah, anytime <laughs> you want, it's it's fun. Like I actually enjoy having these conversations. <laughs>